In this video, we are going to explore all things medical ethics, including the types of questions that you could be asked, the strategies that you can use to navigate the questions, and our four-step process that we use at FutureDoc with all of our students, designed to help them answer any medical ethics question that could come up. Also, stick around until the end where I'll be sharing a crucial tip that will help you to answer any of these questions with ease. So, what are the most common medical ethics questions that you could be asked in an interview? Well, these could range from artificial intelligence in healthcare to genetic editing, the ongoing impact of the global health crisis, resource allocation, or even sexual health and providing contraception to minors. These are all quite complex and challenging scenarios so having a framework to help you answer the questions will really help. Make sure that you stay informed and you do some extra reading from reputable sources like the World Health Organization and other cutting edge medical journals. Now let's talk strategy. I will introduce you to the four pillars of medical ethics, autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. These are essential to analyze the ethical dimensions of medical scenarios. And then moving forward, we will connect the dots between medical ethics and the law. Remember that ethics guide our decisions while law sets the boundaries. So now onto the four-step plan to help you tackle any medical ethics question that you could be asked in an interview. Step one is the four pillars framework. In this step, we are going to systematically explore each pillar to help us understand the ethical considerations. Let's say that you are given a scenario about artificial intelligence and technological advancements in healthcare. I'll use that as an example for this four-step plan. So let's adapt the four pillars of medical ethics accordingly. So let's start with autonomy. Autonomy means that each person has the right to make decisions about their own healthcare and their own lives. So taking this into account, we want to acknowledge the impact of personalized medicine, as well as the empowerment of patients. You might want to consider how patients can make informed decisions in today's society, especially if they are a bit more tech savvy. Moving on to beneficence. Beneficence is a principle that requires doctors to act in the best interests of a patient. For this point, you might want to discuss how emerging healthcare technologies might contribute to doing good for patients, but also recognize the potential limitations and drawbacks, such as the ethical implications of new and innovative treatments. Moving on to non-maleficence, this is the duty of a doctor to do no harm to the patient. For this point, you might want to explore the challenges of minimizing potential harm, where even well-intentioned actions may lead to possible risks. And finally, there is justice. Justice is the principle that when you are trying to decide whether something is ethical or not, you have to take in the law, the patient's best interests, and whether something is fair and balanced. It also means that we must ensure that no one is unfairly disadvantaged when it comes to access to healthcare. So for justice, we might want to consider how healthcare policies can impact the distribution of resources, especially with the ongoing global health crisis. You could also consider different perspectives on access and equity. Once we have considered those four pillars and we've thought about each of those in turn, we can move on to relevant and pertinent law. This is the second step where we tie in all of those ethical considerations to the current law. In this step, the three C's, consent, capacity, and confidentiality are very important. So going back to our technology in healthcare scenario, we could consider, firstly, consent. So here we can discuss how data privacy laws and informed consent can evolve with the increasing integration of technology in healthcare. We can also consider the challenges of gaining consent and what this might mean for patients. Our second C is capacity. Here we can explore the legal implications of mental capacity in the context of new treatments and interventions, especially those involving advanced technologies or therapies. And finally, our third C is confidentiality. Here we can analyze the impact of constantly evolving data protection laws to maintain patient confidentiality in a world where health information is increasingly digital and interconnected. For other scenarios, 
scenarios, you could consider other laws that are important and that you might be aware of. For example, the Doctrine of Necessity, Fraser's Guidelines, or the Mental Health Act. Moving then on to step number three, here we'll summarise our key points. Once you have explored the ethical considerations as well as the legal aspects, you then combine all of that information. You will want to summarise all of the main arguments, including arguments for and against using a particular technology or whatever your scenario is about. And you might want to focus on just one or two of the ethical dilemmas and really make sure that you discuss how and why they're important. Also consider how they might impact multiple people involved in the situation. It might not just be the patient, but it could be healthcare providers and their families or even society at large. And once you have summarized all of your key points in step three, we move on to step four, which is to share your opinion. Here, it is important to remember that there might not be a right answer. I often see students get really caught up on this idea that they have to say the right thing but interviewers are usually looking at your thought process and how well you can reason and take different points into account and come up with a balanced conclusion. It's about demonstrating adaptable thinking and up-to-date knowledge. So in this point, you are going to be bringing everything together. You will provide your opinion and what you think is the best course of action, taking into account all of the different arguments, but also make sure that you showcase adaptability by considering the impact that different decisions may have on different people involved. And finally, remember to demonstrate how the decision that you are making or your opinion aligns with ethical and legal standards. Remember, there is no one size fits all answer. It's more about your ability to analyze and articulate a thoughtful response. And now for my golden tip, this phrase is going to help you handle any situation with confidence and will ensure that the interviewer trusts your decision making. If you are given a scenario and you're not 100% sure on what you would say or what you would do, you could say something like, I would consult with a senior colleague always maintaining the patient's confidentiality. Saying a phrase or something along those lines will help to demonstrate that you are seeking support when and where you need it, but also that you're aware of the evolving legal and ethical considerations in healthcare environments. For more information on how you can prepare for your interviews, remember to check out the updated playlist, which will appear up here, tailored to the latest advancements of 2024. I would highly recommend that you start are preparing for your interviews early and if you are a bit unsure on how to do this and you'd like some further support then check out the future doc website for more information otherwise thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you in our next video